This is Here Come the Irish. We have Link Jarrett online, head baseball coach at Notre Dame, entering his first season. Link, how's practice today? Practice today was great. Got outside. Um, everybody was, was laughing. They're like, you know, this unbelievable 50 degrees. And it hasn't been a bad winter. Um, we actually were outside Sunday, yesterday, and today. And um, it was a little windy yesterday, but we got to do a lot of fly ball work. Um, got the outfielders involved, which is our toughest deal when we go in the indoor facility that we have available to train in. Like you can do some good infield work, but the outfielders are very restricted on how far they can go laterally. So we did a lot of work yesterday out there to try to get our corner outfielders involved. Um, fly ball work, team fly ball communication. Today we spent a lot of time on cutoffs and relays and balls in the gaps and balls in the corners, things that we – don't get a chance to do on a regular basis indoors. And, you know, looking at the weather, may be the last time that we go outside before we head to Birmingham. And if so, we wanted to make the most of it. So we had a pretty good workout today, lengthy. Um, did a little drill where um, kind of a live coach pitch type game, all two strikes hitting, all with two base runners on the bases at all times. So you've got a lot of base running reads and balls to the outfield and, double play opportunities, and, and again, when the outfield's involved, um, that's something that we don't get a lot of reps with indoors. So, you know, we made the most of these two days, and it was really good. Today was very active, um, a lot of running, a lot of base running, and uh, it, it turned out to be a good day for us. Yeah, you'll have to get used to being up here in the Midwest. We're not going to have too many uh, days like that, but you hit it right on the nail. Um, outfielders, there's really no substitution besides live reps outside was it uh, fairly windy today, or what was the weather like up in South Bend? It was 51 or 52 with sun was out, and the wind was not bad today. So it was, uh, it was very manageable. Um, and we, the, the guys get out of class a little later, Monday and Wednesday, so we were able to start at 345 and got done about 615. Uh, we had a group that needed a lift. So, um, but it was, it was beautiful today. You take this every day. So it was nice. Absolutely. And, you know, sounds like, um, we're coming up here talking about the identity of the team. Uh, it seems like you guys are doing a lot of defensive work, especially, you know, this early on in the season, but with the drills and stuff you were talking about with runners on base, two strike hitting, um, what kind of identity did you want to bring to Notre Dame this season? Were you guys going to be centered more on small ball? Were you guys going to have a lot of power offense? Just kind of what, in your mind as head coach, do you want to bring to Notre Dame for this upcoming season? Well, when you take over a program, um, you have to look at the strengths and the weaknesses of what you have coming back. And we have we have a lot of guys back. Um so experience is a strength. Uh, the weakness of the team looking at it was probably the ability just to handle the batted ball. Um, not consistent defensively in handling the batted ball, the thrown ball, the you know, team defensive stuff, the mechanics of where you need to go and, and what you're doing. When the ball team on it is, I mean, that's a sign of a good team, and we were not good at that last year. You, you can look at the numbers and see that. Um, your pitching staff works in conjunction with that defense. So those two things go hand in hand. I mean, you've got to be able to throw strikes, and we have some guys that can run it up there. We have some guys with good off-speed pitches. I, I think we have some pieces on the mound that can pile some strikeouts up. But when the ball's in play, we have to be better at simply handling the ball. And I've, I've spent a lot of time on that. You know, my concepts of how we do fly ball communication and, you know, your bump defenses and the things that come up that require multiple people to do it the right way. Like, you have to spend time on that. And it's obviously new to everybody in the program the way I do it. Um, so we've spent a lot of time, and the identity of our team needs to be much better defensive work. So we, we've tried to hit on that. Offensively, you have to look at your personnel. We, we've got some power with uh, John, Cavadas, and Gilgenbach, and, 
Visca, um, there are some guys that can drive the ball. Against the Arms, you're going to see the ACC is as good as it's ever been this year, as good as it's ever been. So to think you're going to stand there and bang away with those type of arms against you is you're just hoping. So you have to be able to run the bases. And that includes jumps and turns and stealing bases from time to time. have to be able to do it. And Spencer Myers and Miller and Prisner, um, you know, Coachy is a little bit, can do a little bit of both with the power and the bunny. Ryan Cole can do a little bit of both. But the short game, the bunny, for some of those guys that can run, Myers, Cole, Jiska, Miller, Brannigan, they have to be able to bunt and use the bunting game as a weapon as well. So you have to be versatile. Um, and then what the inning and the, the opponent allows you to do, you have to be able to take advantage. And I don't want to be a one-dimensional group. So that team offense has been an emphasis to me here. And my stuff is new to these guys, so having some freedom and some flexibility to do different things that their skills allow, I, I hope that it translates quickly into you know better team offense. But team offense and team defense really, um, you know, we have to improve that to win at this level here in the ACC. Have to. Coach, uh, what has it been like since you took over as head coach at Notre Dame? Has it been has it flew by, and how what has it been like on and off the field for you? It's been out. Excuse me. It's been outstanding. Like it's such a special place. Um, you know the support within the administration and the, the kids. Like they're they're great kids. These are the best student athletes in the world. Like they really are. The academic rigor for them to number one get in, number two to work towards a degree from Notre Dame. It, it's a lot. And then you know we push them very hard baseball wise, and these guys respond. Um, remarkably well to everything you push them to do. Um, that's been very enjoyable. Um, you know, obviously I'm concerned about our ability to, to put a product on the field that allows us to win in this conference. In this con- I think we have eight teams ranked in the top 25 in baseball right now. Like, that's strong, I mean, as strong as it is in any sport. And um, I do recognize – that there are some areas that we have to improve in to do what we want to do and, and get in that large bit of the regional and move this thing into the upper part of the ACC. Um, so in terms of pure enjoyment, I guess I get lost in, in my work and trying to help these guys develop as players, and as individuals, as people, more than I just sit back and enjoy being the head coach at Notre Dame. I mean, there's, there's a lot in terms of the expectations of, what we're trying to do with the program. So um, I'm very happy that I'm the head coach. I, I guess I don't step back and look at it as, uh, you know, a finished product right now. I, I recognize the, the work and you know, the demand at playing at such a high level to, to boot this thing along. Uh, recruiting has been good. I think we're up to 11 now in our class, the 2020 class, including two grad transfers. Uh, one of them is through the admissions process. The other one is, is working their way through that. Those two guys would help us tremendously. That's, that's an instant athlete that's got four years of college under their belt, um, and that's a niche for us at Notre Dame. The, the grad student wants to come here to get that degree. Um, so I, I've been really enjoyed everything. We've worked very hard. Recruiting is never going to end, but um, you know when you're trying to put your – stamp on the program and how you want to do things, the first year or so of recruiting, uh, you know, people start to get to know you and, and understand what you're about. And then as players come in from the outside and join your program, the, the word spreads that you're going to do it the right way. You're going to push the guys, that you're going to treat the guys fairly and uh, that it's a good program to, to play in and to send your, your child to to come play for us. Hey, Coach, um, speaking of a doing it the right way, obviously you had a career at Florida State and you're really familiar with the competition in the ACC. Um, what did you learn? I know your, uh, your idol, Mike Martin, retired last year. What did you learn from him that's helped you become the coach that you are today? Well, you know, your foundation of, of coaching probably starts as a player. My high school coach was great. 
Jeff Hogan, um, and then obviously playing for Coach Martin and being out there on the field for four years for him. Like he he had a way of, of managing kind of the personalities on the team and um, had a way of utilizing his pitching staff um, to get the most out of what he had available. And I thought knowing, you know, how to use maybe pitchers that weren't as talented but could throw their secondary pitches in any count, um, that could control the running game and um, – Guys that he trusted with the ball in their hand on the mound, I saw how important that was to him. I mean, he wasn't a pitching guy by trade, but he he put such a premium on what you were doing on the mound. Um, it started there. Um, he had a very high trust level with the people that he put on the field to play. Not only on the mound, but he wanted you to be able to do certain things, and if you could do those things, you know, he trusted you to play and help him win. And I thought that was very important. It wasn't really a, a talent competition to him. It was who could do the little things the right way to help the team win and probably why he racked up more wins than anybody else because he stuck to that. He was a good teacher, um, you know, and I hope I can bring some of those things, you know, to Notre Dame. And I've been in, I guess, seven programs and you want to pull bits and pieces of things you learned along the way, coaching the SEC and coaching at Florida State and um, coaching at Conference USA and then as a head coach trying to build, you know, what turned out to be a really good program for us at Greensboro. You, you learn from everybody you're around, even people you coach against, and you try to mold um, your style and your book, so to speak, of how you want to run your program and how you want to run a game. Um, and you pull pieces from, from everywhere. But again, your foundation tends to be where you were groomed as a player. And, you know, I coached for Coach Mont for a year, so I, I've soaked in as much as I could from him there. And then, you know, um, East Carolina and Mercer and Auburn and Flagler and all these places, you, you just try to build your your way and your style. And you have to be, you know, I have to, I have to stay within my personality and, and the way I want to run things, and um, you just try to try to dive in and go with it. And um, it's a never-ending evolution of, of your coaching traits, and that's why I'm now, and it's trying to run the things into this program that moves these athletes along and, and build a, a winner here. Absolutely, and you know, I know earlier you were hitting on the fact that you guys were trying to get more sound as team defense. Um, obviously, you yourself holding the NCAA assist record with 802 assists. Um, as a player, I feel like that would be something that I would have, you know, would buy into my coach with how good you were as a player and the knowledge that you bring to the table. Um, the three College World Series you played and all those things, along with the coaching experience that you've built up, I feel like is huge um, to be able to show these players, hey, I'm bringing a winning culture here, and we're going to be able to win. Um, what do you think that the Irish have to do um, and that you have to do as the coach there to eventually be able to make the NCAA tournament and possibly even the College World Series, you know, in your tenure at Notre Dame? Well, the, the sport is really revolves around the guys on the mound, and the strength of your bullpen um, is really, really important. And, you know, we spent all day, Chuck and I today, we literally spent all day trying to decide what the best starting moves are, who's going to start our games, and then what the best pieces are for the middle and late innings. And that's a big part of it. I mean, you've got to be good when you start games, but if you're going to have a chance to win the middle innings and the late innings, you almost have to trend upwards in the quality of the arms and the stuff that you're running out there to finish games off. Um, that's important. Um, you know, we've got to get more athletic, and I'm trying to move some people around on our team right now that maybe have played positions that I think um, maybe we can move them and get a little bit more out of them, um, make them more comfortable, solidify our defense. I mean, those are some things that I'm – I'm trying to fine-tune even today at practice. 
Um, you know, I want to try Cavadas at first base. He's played more third than anything else here. Um, I think he's capable of being a good first baseman. I think Miller, his double play pivots and his quickness looks good to me as a second baseman. Prisner's very solid, but plays forward with a little more arm strength maybe, and, and I, I think shortstop would work. Those two guys might be interchangeable. we got a first one that's a tremendous athlete, Jack Brannigan. Um, I, he's going to look to have a chance to start at third base. Very, very athletic, rangy, fast. I think that helps. So when you're asking what we have to do, like we've got to have these guys athletically in spots that they can handle. Um, and that's, that's the number one thing that revolves around then the overall talent and ability of the pitching staff. If you can keep your team in games offensively, you can figure out ways to score if you're creative. And that's where I went back to all the different parts of the offense that I think you need to have the capabilities to do. Hit for some power, tough two-strike hitting, some bunning and some good base running and some, some stolen bases. That's how you're going to have to figure out ways to beat the good arms. But if you can't defend, if you can't pitch, you can't really outscore an inability to defend and throw strikes and pitch. So, the recipe for getting in the NCAA tournament is consistent pitching, solid, sound, athletic team defense, and figuring out an offensive identity each game, each inning, that with some versatility allows you to score. And it's that simple. So from a recruitment standpoint, recruiting athletic kids that can move maybe from the middle of the field where they play in high school to third, to right field instead of center, to first base instead of you know, a big shortstop or, you know, a, a big outfielder that throws left-handed that's fairly athletic that could come in to play first base. Those are the things you try to do to, to upgrade your athleticism from a recruiting standpoint. And, again, with your current team, you better get these athletes in the spots you feel like they're most suited to play to help you win right now. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do right this morning. Did it today. Hey, Coach, um, obviously, um, do you have any takeaways last year from – you have another program in Michigan Wolverines last year who were able to make it all the way to the College World Series and almost win it. Um, as a Midwestern school, that, that doesn't really happen a lot. Can you take anything from away from their run last year? Say that again. I lost you there. Yeah, um, Michigan's won, run to the College World Series last year. Yeah, as a Midwest program. Can you take any way, anything away from that? Well, if you created and you have indoor capabilities, you've got to – You've got to utilize that indoor stuff and make it creative and realistic and work at it. So when you do get outside, you're not behind the eight ball in terms of your preparation. So obviously they've done that. Their recruitment and utilization of, of institutional financial aid, Michigan's done a good job of that. Bandy's done a good job of that. You have to get creative. I mean, it's not a, it's not a head count football sport where you have – your whole team on full scholarships. You have to divide these things up, and there's aid available from other avenues aside from just the baseball money. And those guys have done a good job. Backage was at Vandy at one time, and that's something that a private school has available. Uh, but Michigan, Michigan has it. We have it. Vandy has it. And, but you have to you have to be creative in how you recruit. Obviously, they're they're good coaches. They have good athletes. And it's a well-rounded program. So that's what we're trying to do. You have to be creative with your recruiting. Um, you have to be creative with your training. And then when you get to manage your players and manage your games, you've got to do a good job of that. And I think, you know, Backage Eric has done a, has done a good job. Nick Schnabel has done a good job recruiting at Michigan. Um, and, and I think we can follow suit with what they've done here. Obviously, they're right up the road. So um, their, their facilities indoors are comparable to ours. You know, it's in play. Uh, and it kind of makes you happy to see a team that's this close go that far and have a chance to win a national championship play for it um, from here. It does, it's not always going to be California or Texas or Florida or people from those states. So you can do it without creativity and true dedication to, to your craft. It, it will be hard. Yeah, Coach, uh, we don't have, uh, I'm not going to keep you too much longer here. It's got a few more questions. Um, speaking of that recruiting strategy, um, do you have any specific area? Obviously, 
the um, the Atlantic coast is kind of more of your your bread and butter where you've been at traditionally, but are you recruiting here in the state along the coast? Is there a specific region of the country that you're kind of focusing on or just find the player that fits the program? you got to find the right fit. And the brand of Notre Dame and what it represents, we've got people committed from Southern California, Panama City Beach, Florida, New Jersey, um, I mean, it's all over. It's all over. And it has to be because academically, you know, with what we're having to recruit from an academic standpoint, you're taking the top layer of each class of athletes, and that's all you can handle the top. Like, you're not going to be able to dip down in to, you know, an average student and get them better name. Like, it's an elite student. So that top layer is what you're looking for. But you got to come. You got to come the country to find that layer and to find your eight to fifteen guys, depending on what you're doing with your roster that year. That work. It's tough, and that's why Rich Wallace, our new recruiting coordinator, has been all over. He's been a great. He's been at uh, High Point, it's a private school in North Carolina, very competitive program. He's been at Jacksonville University, they're a regional team. Great, he built that team. That, was so good last year. He built that roster. Um, and he's recruited nationally because that's what you have to do at private schools. So um, Chuck Persona, our pitching coach, uh, he's originally from New York. He knows the Northeast like the back of his hand. He can dive in there. And I've got connections through my 20 years of this all over the place. So it's a nonstop mm-hmm. national hunt. Um, and we have local kids. Ryan Lynch, Brady Gump. We've got kids from right here coming, but we've got kids from as far away from Notre Dame as you get coming too, and that's what it's going to take. Hey, Coach, um, we'll try to get to many games as possible this year. We're actually here in Indianapolis, and there's a big um, big game you guys have scheduled about halfway through the season against the Indiana Hoosiers. That's something we're, we're really excited for. Um, the two programs have scheduled in the past um, and played at Victory Field, and I believe when the weather was right, there was upwards of about 10,000 people there. So when you get, we already marked on our calendars to come watch you then, and we look forward to seeing you at that game. And then I think um, I think you guys play at Louisville too, so we'll try to check you, maybe um, make a trip down there in Louisville and check you guys out. But um, that Notre Dame IU game, that's definitely special for college baseball. And um, once you see all the fans there, if the weather permitting, I think it'll be a really good environment that game. Good. Yeah, I've never – I saw Victory Field – the convention, our ABCA convention, was in Indy, shoot, two years ago, I believe. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I could see the stadium from our hotel, but it was January 5th or 6th, and it was really, really cold. Um, but that's, that's fun. And I love Indy. I can't wait for that. Our guys are excited about that game and making that trip. Um, and then Louisville, you know, when you go to North Carolina and then you go to Louisville to start – your conference stuff, that's a, uh, that's going to be a true test. And, uh, that, that's our, obviously we got five weekends in a row on the road. The first three, we're not going to be able to play here with the weather the way it usually is. And then we get to North Carolina and then you'll catch us in Louisville. So hopefully we've got some good stuff under our belt at that point and have racked up some wins. Uh, but those two, that's a test right out of the gate. That's a test for anybody. You go to North Carolina, go to Louisville. So. Hopefully it's upbeat when you catch us in Louisville. <laughs> well, uh, Coach, I think that's about all that we have here for you today. Just want to say thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on here. I uh, really appreciate um, you know, what you're doing for the School of Notre Dame and where you're going to be taking this program uh, moving forward. And looking forward to you know, hopefully here in the near future seeing some NCAA tournaments and some College World Series appearances out of you guys. Sounds great, Mike. Man, we're working hard. Guys are working hard. We got some work to do. Got some work to do. But the guys are receptive. They're working at it. I appreciate you following up and and let me speak with you. Yeah, Coach. If you want to stay on here just a second longer, I'm going to wrap up our show. Um, Coach Link Jarrett, head baseball coach at Notre Dame, uh, on the podcast here. I think they believe they open up with UAB here in less than two weeks. So definitely um, ready for college baseball season to start. Ready for the warmer weather. But definitely appreciate him taking time out of his busy schedule to come on our show. And uh, thanks again.